Welcome to the West Side Church in Rockford, Illinois. A legacy of praise, a beacon of hope, a vision of tomorrow. We hope that you enjoy this message. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you on today. God is good. He's worthy of all the praise and the glory and the honor. We serve a great God. We serve a right now God. We serve a God that, that, that just sets high. He looks low. Uh, there's nothing too hard for him. Nothing at all is too hard for God. I thank you for allowing me to share with you on today. I love my West Side family. Thank you for all the viewers that are looking and listening and, and, and viewing this on, to, on today because I believe that God has something for all of us. He always has something for us, but we have to be receptive to what God has for us, which is a great thing. God is wonderful. He's awesome. I just want to begin to pray at this time. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for your many blessings. And we thank you, God, for another opportunity, another chance, Lord God, to be able to stand before your sacred desk, to declare and decree, Lord God, your word. And we just thank you, Lord God, for just giving me, affording me that opportunity. I love you with my whole heart and soul. You have proven over and over in my life that you're worthy. You're worthy of the praise. And Lord, I just want to tell you, thank you. I just bless your name. I glorify your name, Lord God. And Lord, I ask you to be with me, Lord God, as I share on today, Lord God, cover me with your, with your love and that the delivery, Lord God, will be received, Lord God, and that the seed will fall on good ground. And Lord, we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Truly, God is good. He is worthy of all of the praise. I want to talk to you a little bit about I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. And you should just get that in your mind, whatever it may be that you are into, to say that I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I'm going to be speaking from Romans 8, uh, 31 through 39, uh, coming from the King James Version. And I want to kind of uh, uh, drop well, I want to also read that same uh, uh, text, but I want to read it from the Message Bible. I think that will give us a little better translation of what Paul is trying to convey to us in his letter to Rome. And I read, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make it intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, the uh, second translation. So what do you think with God on our side like this? How can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us 
embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Oh, that's us, y'all. Who would dare even to point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sin listed in scripture. They kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. None of, the, none of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. I'm coming out of this. My brothers and my sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it's imperative to understand that difficulty can change you from the better or the worse. What do you mean, Brother Preacher? If you must ask, let me try my very best to shed some light on this. You must know that as long as you are in this life, rather, uh, 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 whether you are ready or not, you are going to be confronted with difficulty. It's inevitable. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. As a matter of fact, the reality is simply that it's unavoidable. And as a consequence, none of us, and I mean none of us, want to be the first to experience it. Why? Because it changes your life from normal to abnormal. Normalcy is where our comfort zone resides. It means safety or contentment, connection and predictability. Abnormal can become a so-called uh, interruption in your life. It, uh, it can become a so-called interruption in your life. If it's not your, your finances, it's your health. If it's not your health, it's your family. If it's not your family, it's your job. If it's not your job, it's your friends. If it's not your friends, it's losing a loved one to death, which can be very painful as you journey through life. It doesn't matter how cute you are, how much money you have, or how saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. You are going to go through something. But while you are going through, you must choose the right attitude while you are going through it. If there is an entrance, hmm, you need to get this. If there is an entrance, there has to be an exit. Ah, oh, bless God. I need some believers wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are to concur with me and get, get this into your spirit that I might be going through something right now, but I will take an uncompromising stand to declare and decree that in spite of how things look, like I'm coming out of this. I am coming out of this no matter what the situation may be, what folks are saying, what things look like. I am coming out of this. You got to believe this. You got to know this that I'm coming out of this situation. I, I like to echo what Psalms 24, 7 and 8 says. It says, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. 
Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Contrary to popular belief, this is not my fight. This battle is not mine, but God's. Ah, bless God. It's told that your attitude determines your altitude. Choosing the wrong attitude can cause you to become paralyzed in your own state of mind. Choosing the right attitude will allow you to soar above your situation. I believe I have some eagles in the house, eagles out there that wants to soar above your situation. God is good. He's worthy of all the plays. He prays. He, he's worthy. I love him with all of my heart. I love him with all of my soul and my mind and my body. Don't you love him on today? Don't you love God? Aren't you glad that he picked you up? Don't you, aren't you glad that he, he turned you around? Aren't you glad that he opened doors from you? Aren't you even glad that he shut some doors for you? Aren't you glad that, that it could have been you out there with, with nothing but God because of his mercy and because of his grace? He thought about you out of all the billions and trillions of people. People, he had you on his mind. Oh, bless God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. We are not here to live a problem-free life. It comes with many challenges. But you must understand first and foremost is that life is a gift from God. But the most important part of life is when you give your life to Jesus. Ah. Uh, good to be saved? Isn't it good just to know that God, I thank you for, for saving me. I, my life was jacked up. My life was a wreck. I was on my way to hell. God, you gave me an opportunity to live for you, me. Oh Lord, I thank you and I praise you. I praise you. Life is a gift of God, but it comes with hardship. It comes with unexpected. It comes with sickness and disease. It comes with disappointments. It comes with unwanted trials, and it comes with suffering. Ah, oh, bless God. In this particular text, Paul writes this letter to the Romans. Even though he had never visited Rome during the writing of these letters, he writes these letters while he is in the Greek city of Corinth. The, prior, the primary theme running through Paul's letter is to the Romans in the revelation of God's righteousness and his plan for salvation, what the Bible calls the gospel. And to make this thing uh, crystal clear to you, you first of all, you must take a look at verse 31 to 34. When you look at verse 31 and 34 of Romans 8, uh, you'll find that there are series of questions. Uh, well, some of the questions are, what shall we say then? What shall we say about what? If a paragraph in the Bible has the word if, or, then, or because, or therefore, or since, then it is directly related to the passage above it. There are cause and effects transitions. You cannot understand the effect unless you understand the cause. So I need to understand what Paul has written up to chapter 8, verse 31. Let's look at what Paul said in the beginning of this chapter. If you run back to the first verse of, of, of Romans 8, you see this. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, now, this is starting to help me to understand uh, where 31 came from now. He then goes on to expound on the power we have through the Holy Spirit. He proclaimed that through the Spirit we have become joint heirs with Christ. And then he provides us with the hope of the inheritance of, uh, we have in Christ that is in heaven and eternal. So when he said in verse 31... If God is for us, who can be against us? Watch this. He's not 
saying that just because God is for us, we won't face persecution, we won't experience suffering. Let me give you Paul's resume. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 24 and 27. He says, five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have have faced danger from my own people. Oh, Lord, help us. The Jews as well as the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty, and I have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Ah, but he still say that I shall let nothing separate me from the love of God. Ah, oh, nothing, 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 nothing separate me from the love of God. We should understand that many times the struggle. I need you to get this. We, must, we should understand that many times the struggle, the fight, the warfare, the praying. The waiting patiently, the enduring is important as the blessing or the reward. Hmm. While we are looking at the reward, God is looking at the development that is taking place through the struggle. Oh, bless his name. Oh, we serve an awesome God, y'all. We serve an awesome God. Let me share this with you right quick. Let me share this with you right quick. Uh, I'm, I'm getting close to closing, but let me share this with you. There was a man who found a cocoon of an emperor moth, moth and took it home so he could watch the moth come out of the cocoon. One day a small opening appeared. The man sat and watched the moth for several hours as it struggled to force its body through that little hole. Then it seemed to stop making any progress. Isn't that something how sometimes it seemed like we're not making progress? It seemed like we've been going for so long and we're not making any progress. But then sometimes we have the audacity to try to move the progress by doing things ourselves. So it wasn't making any progress any progress at all to the man it appeared as if the moth had gotten as far as it could in breaking out of the cocoon and was stuck out of kindness and I'm trying to do the right thing out of kindness the, the man decided to help the moth he took a pair of scissors and snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon so that the moth could get out. Soon the moth emerged, but it had a swollen body and small shriveled wings. The man continued to watch the moth, expecting that in time the wings would enlarge and expand to be able to support the body, which would simultaneously contract to its proper size. Neither happened. In fact, that little moth spent the rest of his life crawling around with a swollen body and shriveled wings. It was never able to fly. The man in his kindness didn't understand that the restricting cocoon and the struggle required for the moth to get through the tiny opening were God's way of forcing fluid from the body into the wings so that the moth would be ready to, to flight once, to fight once it achieved its freedom from the cocoon. So what's the moral of all of this? It's in the struggle. 
Let God be God. Let God be God. I don't care what you are dealing with, what you are going through. We're coming out of this. We're coming out of this. We're coming out of this pandemic. We're coming out of all these different things that has, uh, has affected us in a way that's causing us to be different. The world is different now. People are different now. Change has come. We're seeing things that we have never seen before. And we ask the question, why? I don't have the answer. But God has all the answer and God is still in control of this situation. He's still in control of this situation. I love this. This, this is a, just a small piece of the song of Travis Green. And it says like this. It goes like this. It says, and, and you move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here today only because you made a way. Dear God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for your many blessings. And we thank you, Lord God, for this word, Lord God. I'm coming out of this. I, I sit at, Lord God, in belief, Lord God. Things may not look uh, clear to us at this time. It seems like we're going backwards instead of going forward. But God, we know that there, there's, there's a blessing, Lord God, in the struggle. There's a blessing in the struggle, Lord God. Uh, some of us don't want to experience that. We don't want to uh, be, uh, be interrupted in any kind of way. But God, you have great plans for us, and we, does not, we do not want to, to derail your plans that you have for us. And we just thank you right now. We thank you for giving me again the opportunity, Lord God, to share something, Lord God. There are so many words and, and of, of going out today. There are so many preachers who are preaching and trying to encourage the world, trying to help the world to be a better place. We, God, we thank you, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God, for salvation. I thank you, God, for salvation, Lord God. You didn't have to do it, but you did. I just want all of you to know that God's got something great for you. And tell your neighbor, and I want you to run right now. You don't have to run outside, but just jump up and down and say, I'm coming out of this. God bless you.